Hi, I'm Max. And I'm Skylar. Recently, we decided to start watching Bob's Burgers to see what it was all about. And it didn't take us long to become completely obsessed with the show. But one of the things we love the most about the show is the brilliant end credit sequences. Which is why we created this podcast. Each week, we're going episode by episode to talk about the elaborate end credits. We're excited to have you join us right here on Bob's Credits. We'll make sure the Bob's Burgers end credits get the credit they're due. All right! Chip Chipper Goose, Bob's Burgers fans. I absolutely love that. Like, I absolutely love this episode we're about to dive into. It is a phenomenal episode, and we are going to get into all things honk-worthy, hiss-worthy. Honk. When Linda goes, honk, honk, when she's just, like acting like the goose, I'm very into it. One of Linda's less annoying noises, if you Correct. will. Correct. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about this episode, but you know the deal. We've got a couple new Patreon subscribers to thank, and we have to burger pun their names. First up, thank you so much. Bertha Crowley, moving forward, you will be known as the Cucumbertha Crowleek Burger. Excellent puns. On your pun game. Welcome, Bertha. We're so happy to have you. Getting a big dose of veggies into. We're big on that here. <laughs> Our personal lives always like seep into whatever we're into right now. That's what the nightmare and beauty of having a podcast is all about. <laughs> Correct. Joining you is Mariana Santos. Moving forward, you will be known as the Mariana. Oh, yum. San Toast Burger. So All it's right, like a more, toasted naan burger. More carbs on this one. I'm I'm into that as well. Veggies and carbs. You get some veggies and carbs and you're good to go. Just order both of these burgers when you go into Bob's Burgers or Bob's Credits or the restaurants, which we're going to open eventually. Yeah, they say most restaurants fail, so why not? Let's do it. Why, why not? not? Thank you so much to the two of Welcome, you. Welcome, Bertha and Mariana. We hope you're enjoying all of those bonus episodes and all the fun bonus things over on Patreon. And next month, we are going to be doing our next watch party. We're doing four per year, and May is is the way to go. I'm thinking spring vibes. Oh, we're going to do some spring episodes, some spring watch parties. That's what I was feeling. What are you feeling? No, that sounds good to me. You know what? This one would probably qualify, the one that we're about okay, to get into. Okay, I'm just – I have so many things I want to talk about this episode, and I'll just slip this in here. The park – Gorgeous. I was thinking the Gorgeous. same thing. I'm we like, need to have a whole episode about the park. Like what 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 is what is going on? Like you have this rickety wonder wharf, but then next door you have this absolutely stunning park that's like prettier than Central Park. I don't like, like I would live there. Sounds like where we live. One street is all rickety yep. and then the other street is this gorgeous park. I feel like a lot of cities are like that, honestly. Yeah. We're gonna get into that. We we're gonna get into it. But if you would like to have your name Burger Punt here on the show, even if you don't, and you just want all of those bonus episodes, blah, 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 you know, you know the deal. But <laughs> Max is tired, he's even tired of his own spiel. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do it. You gotta do it. Patreon.com slash Bob's Credits. Max Miller. Skylar Harrison Dash Miller. Are you ready for Skylar Sides? The fun facts before the fun facts. Dish it, girl. I'm just gonna be really honest with y'all. I had a very kind of elaborate Skylar Sides plan for today, so it'll be a spoiler. Next week, we are going to be listening to some French dubbing to get to know what Bob's Burgers sounds like in French. I am so excited for this because uh, I've been hearing little clips of you listening to it for yeah. Skylar Sides, and I enjoy every moment of it. Um, I did think for a second you said French dubstepping. I was like, I was thinking like, like sacre bleu. <laughs> anyway, it took me a while to be able to track down some some proper French clips, and I'm I'm really excited to introduce you to the characters in French. They're very different, but because we have I have so much I want to say about this phenomenal A plus episode. Um, I decided to keep it a little shorter 
And I'm also running around town today trying to source ingredients for our next YouTube video, which is we are shooting the Mrs. Winthorpe seven layer parfait flambe on Friday. So <laughs> I'm keeping I'm so it short excited. today. I'm so excited. Skyla does all this work prepping it, and I just get to sit back and show up and be the idiot who cooks next to her and snacks on things as we cook. <laughs> so I can't wait. If you haven't seen our uh, us making jeans loaded baked potato lasagna, just search Bob's Credits on YouTube for our channel. Yeah. And it's that's up there with a whole lot of other things. It's a lot of fun over there. Yeah. So I have to go buy the lady fingers and cream of tartar day because they don't have that at our grocery store. And then tomorrow, just some spoilers of what's going to be in the parfait. I have to do some homemade whipped cream and I'm making homemade meringue so that we can light it on fire with brandy. This sounds like a disaster waiting to happen, and I cannot wait to shoot it with you. This is like a cute conversation, but I really hope like the next time we record, we're not like, well, we should have gotten home renter's insurance because we burned down our apartment, and this conversation's not going to be as cute. You know what I mean? Yeah, but think about think about the uh, views. <laughs> Burn down your apartment for the views, baby. I'm not saying you should burn it down your apartment for the views, everyone. <laughs> maybe if you have, maybe if you have renter's insurance, like get the views, get the money, like okay. I don't know that. I don't know if that's how insurance works when there's evidence of you burning <laughs> down your apartment. Recorded on the podcast. Yeah. Okay. Listen. Now that this has become the longest Skylar sides, when I was trying to make it shorter, let's jump into it. So I was scrounging around on the Reddit. And I found a photo of what the original Bob's Burgers bathroom looked like. It has been years since I've seen it. Oh, in the restaurant. In the restaurant. Yeah, I guess it has been. And I saw this and I forgot what it looked like. And I said to myself, that's disgusting. I don't know that I would eat there. And I wanted to bring it to the people, the good people of the Bob's Credits podcast. And ask you, like, am I being overly harsh or was this, like, not acceptable? <laughs> now, listen, the photo looks clean, but it looks dirty. Plungers are out in the open like Gretchen's tatas. Let me show you a photo. You tell me, would you eat in this restaurant if you could only see the bathroom? Oh, I mean, this would ruin a lot of restaurants for me, I think. But let me see the picture. We're going to post this on our Instagram carousel. So make sure you're following us there. Uh, Bob's credits. Here, I'm going to hand this over to you. Feel free to zoom in. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is like, I've seen plenty of bathrooms like this. There's a restaurant we love. This looks just like that restaurant's bathroom, like to a T. And there's plenty of places like that. It's just what bathrooms look like and look felix's makeover doesn't match the restaurant but maybe he did some good in there he did but you have not answered my question i feel like a lot of like doctor's office bathrooms look like this too i'm not going to that doctor well Who, maybe it's different go? for women than men okay let the people decide because i, I we're we, on different we, I, I sides don't of the have fence. to sit on the toilet necessarily I'm not that upset about the toilet. I'm upset about all that water damage just dripping down the wall. I'm upset about the plunger that we haven't even tried to hide the feces covered thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It's gross. It's pretty gross. I'm on Team Felix I'm bathroom. not saying it's not clean. I'm sure it's bleached down. Well, the kids clean the bathroom. You know what? I'm not- Do it, they? Do they? As we're going to learn in this episode. But that's their job. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but- I would half-ass clean in the bathroom if I was a kid. 100%. I have clean us. I half-ass clean in the bathroom as an adult. In in our apartment. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops! I shouldn't have admitted that. All right, y'all. Please go on our Instagram or where else on if you're on Discord. Yeah, or Threads. Or it's Threads. In the, it's in the carousel and for in, this episode. In the comments, tell us: Would you eat here? If you just saw 
a photo of the bathroom. There and that it. is my Skylar Sides. Are you ready for a little Bob pun or Max pun? Oniva. <laughs> I should keep these <laughs> screams of me stretching to hand you your phone on the podcast. We are doing Store Next Door this week. Oh, I'm so excited. Are you? It took a little while there, too. I, I got a text message, okay? Oh. I got a text message. Do not disturb mode, I can't, please. I can't do not disturb because... Oh, I guess I could. All my notes and shit are on here. Oh, I know, but so are mine. And I put do not disturb, and then the messages then pop up. Yeah, and I can Boom. never reach you. I could be like, Max... Our apartment is burning down because I tested the flambe. <laughs> Back to the burning down apartment. <laughs> Please come rescue me. And you would be like, da, 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 da. What do you think I would do aside from like running around like E.T. being scared in a cornfield? Honestly, your love for me is like. Jump on the fire. So pure. Jump on the fire. And your love for Biscuit is like monstrous. The so both of you. You would pull us out. I, w- I would oh, hope. I would de- of course I'd pull you out of the fire. I would jump on the fire myself. No, you wouldn't because your phone's on Do Not Disturb. Oh. Oh. Oh, whoops. Okay. I see. I see. <laughs> I see the problem here. How about just while we're recording the podcast, we put our phones on Do Not Disturb? Okay, next time. If there's a fire to be put out, it can be put out after. Okay. I are don't you, think that's how fire works. Are you ready for your first pun, Skylar? Yes. Little Shop of Hula's. Max. Bob's. What is that? I don't understand any of it. I get the little shop of whores, but it doesn't really work. And what are hula's? I guess hula hoops or Oh, I thought these were or hula skirts. I'm I'm so sorry. I thought these were pest controls. I did not say that. I know you didn't. <laughs> I know you didn't. <laughs> Maybe if you had your phone on do not disturb. Okay, that make that makes much you're right. You're right. That makes much more sense. Your next pun is let the polite one in. School of manners. Max. Yes. I love it. I gotta sing this one, I think. Your next pun is, we're not gonna make it. Unassembled furniture. Ooh, that sounds like Bob's, but the song sounds like you. No, we ain't gonna make it. Bob's. Max. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's a competitor to... Ikea. Yes. Yeah. We, Ikea is the original. We're not going to make it. Yeah. Um, and your final pun is sock her mom, ladies boxing gym. She's really thinking about this one, folks. I'm thinking about how violent it is to the mothers of the world, but um, Max. Bob's. Really? Wow. Wow. I think we should just move right on because. Agreed. Bit of a disappointing showing, but maybe because you thought it was uh, <laughs> pest control trucks. Do you want to go get the cream of tartar today? No, absolutely not. <laughs> okay. I do not. I don't even know what that is. I'm going to bring tartar sauce home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're going to have tartar sauce in our, <laughs> in our whip parfait in thing. Our meringue. Yeah. yeah. It stabilizes the meringue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cream of the stuff that like rots your teeth or whatever. <laughs> Come on, let's move on. <laughs> Skylar. Yes. Can we have the title and synopsis for season nine, episode 14, please? The title is Every Which Way But Goose. When Jimmy Jr. ends up not inviting Tina to the night of the living dance, she turns to someone else to fill her emotional needs, a goose named Bruce. But her siblings soon make it their mission to get their girl to the dance. Meanwhile, Linda tries to find a respectable wedding date for Gretchen and, in turn, realizes she was actually trying to just change who Gretchen was, a wild woman who's into smearing mustard on her tatas. This episode came out on February 17th, 2019. It was written by Holly Schlesinger and directed by Kev Watton. Holly Schlesinger? This this might be one of my favorite episodes. It is a really, 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 really good episode. I was like laughing out loud every few minutes. Yeah, it is phenomenal. We already raved about the park, but we're going to have to rave about it even more because along with the writing, the animators made me want to go to a park really badly. I know. (laughs) I just want to point out real quick that since you mentioned the title, that the title is obviously a pun, which... 
Bob's Burgers loves to do. It's a reference to a 1978 Clint Eastwood movie called Every Which Way But... Moose. Wow. (laughs) I would much (laughs) rather see that movie for sure. Every Which Way But Loose. Okay. I don't know it. I'm sorry. Well, I have the IMDb synopsis for you. Are I you love ready this. For this. If if it's worthy enough for you to read it on the podcast, I'm ecstatic. It kind of reads like a Mad Libs. <laughs> okay. The San Fernando Valley Adventures of Trucker Turned Prize Fighter, Philo Bedeau and his pet orangutan Clyde. <laughs> Are they in a romantic relationship? Maybe, uh, based on what happens in this episode. <laughs> I know. I do not know. I've never seen this movie, but I'm very intrigued now. Thank you for bringing that into our lives. You're welcome. I don't think we'll ever read a movie synopsis that we haven't seen that is as good as that one. No. The the one we read a few weeks ago, the like teen 80s movie that was like... When so and so wants to commit suicide, his friends make it a pot. Like it was like oh, yeah, nuts. The, the John Cusack better off dead one. Yeah, I yeah. Was like <laughs> what? Wild time, wild time, wild time, and I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So sorry, I just wanted to take a little. Uh, Thank you. Side trip to talk about that title, but tell me about this episode. Tell me why you love it so much. Tell me. Everything. Tell me all your thoughts on God. Do you know that song? I do. Okay. I do. <laughs> Tell me all your thoughts on Bob's. Oh, there you go. This is why I married her, folks. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's start with the A story because we got to break it down this week because I, I love everything about this episode. I love... A Tina centric episode. I'm sorry I say that every time, but I just do. And then you take a Tina centric episode and you nail every single funny line, every single Tina trope, every single plot turn. I love it. From the get go, the theme of the Night of the Living dance, hysterical. Um, I love her conflict between Jimmy Jr. and then. What Bob's does best is a sharp right turn, and you're like, pardon? Tina's dating a duck this week? Sorry, a goose this week? And you're like, oh, wait, it works. It totally works. It is. very. It's a very interesting scenario, especially when she mentions the kiss, which we don't see on screen. You know, when Tina's like into the beefcake horse and season pepperoni. Yeah. I'm like. Season pepperoni is my favorite season of all Yeah, in season 14. Yeah. I'm like, am I a little weirded out right now? But I wasn't weirded out by the goose at all. You were not weirded out by the goose. Okay, I'm a little weirded out by the goose. The goose was a good listener. (laughs) Are you going to leave me for a goose? It depends on if you start listening to me when I talk and you're on your phone. Got it. That goose, what I said this morning. Oh, it's because the goose doesn't have a phone. I see. Yeah. The go- yeah, because the gooses don't have phones. Got it. I was so into this. I'm. I just thought it was really funny, and I also this is one of my favorite Jimmy Junior episodes. I got to give that dude props. He tried to approach Tina and say, "I want to tell you that I'm not inviting you to the dance." Like he didn't avoid it. He wasn't doing his avoidance. Yeah, this is a much better Jimmy Junior humanity episode yes and tina just wasn't listening he was gonna say like hey i can't tell you why but i'm just not able to go to the dance and then the reveal that he pulled his butt muscle was great also like save the last dance is iconic yeah i think about once a week skyler says look i'm julia styles and save the last dance and it's like, <laughs> do i yeah i'd say so i wish that the choreography When Jimmy's in the flashback doing the Save the Last Dance, I wish it had a a few more iconic dance moves. The only thing I can think of is like when she's like leaning in her on her, (laughs) like she's she's leaning down on her knees, like she's in a sitting position is like going back (laughs) side to side kind of. See, that's iconic when she slides on the floor and like does a hip thrust. There's a chair. 
Why wasn't there a chair in this? I don't know. Well, he was on a couch. So he's watching. He was watching the movie and got into it. Oh, I thought he was standing up. I didn't see him sitting on the couch. Do you know the scene in 10 Things I Hate About You where she gets up on the table drunk and does it? Do dance? I know <laughs> this scene? To, I think it's, uh, uh, what's his name? Why can't I think? Notorious B.I.G. I looked at her as a kid and I was like, that is the coolest woman I've ever seen in my life. And she, she, and she hits her head and she falls. But yeah. I was just like, this is womanhood. I can't wait. So she's a she's a legend in the dance community. Actually, you know what I was doing when you were doing something else, like messing your mic? Messing my mic? Messing with your mic. Oh, you mean setting up to record this podcast for us? <laughs> no. As of 11.01 today, the New York Times sent me an email. About Julia and, Stiles? Yeah, it says, Julia Stiles wanted to be just like Kat Stratford, too. What are the odds? Wait, from that's her character in yeah. the things I hate about Kat, you? Yeah. Wow. What are the odds? I have no, that is kismet because how would I even be talking about Julia Stiles when you're, well, let's just say the last dance yeah. reference. I get it, but still, what are the chances? I love Julia Stiles. I, I adore her. And I think we should watch Save the Last Dance again. I'm not sure how well it will have aged, but. Only if you watch 10 Things I Hate About You also. Oh. Followed by her entire season of Dexter that she was on. I loved her in Dexter. Yeah, she was pretty good. I love her on Instagram too. Anyway, all right. What Point are we being, talking about? Jimmy Jr. has never been more relatable than uh, pulling something to the Save the Last Dance dance. Yes, absolutely. And I liked the climax of Act Three when the goose, I care about this goose. Like, let me just be honest with you. Skylar's in a big bird phase, so mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a phase. I think this is just you now. This is just what happens when you turn 34. Yeah. yeah. You're like Jean at the table saying, this is me now, and it's like just like birds in your shoulders. Yeah. Biscuit doesn't love the birds. Um, I'm also in a th situation with a squirrel named Owen. Yes, that Owen from yes, Bob's we, Burgers. Yeah, we didn't met for Owen, the mm -hmm. Wonder Wharf employee. Yeah. Anyhow, so this climax where the friendship bracelet gets the goose stuck, I, I feel, like, scared and sad and, like, Jimmy Jr., like, steps up. I I just absolutely adore it. Yeah. It's, um, I think keys can be kind of scary and they'll chase you. and Step they'll, Up. They'll, Another yeah. great dance movie. Oh, which one? Step Up or Step Up 2, <laughs> The Streets, or <laughs> Step Up 3, The Country? Do step Up. Step up for more. Wait, do you remember the um? And we were we're rewatching Superstore, and Cheyenne is like, "But step up seven, what does she say? Like, they're out." And then step on six, they're both out. It was just so funny. Anyway, <laughs> side note to say, I know we've said this before on the podcast because we've rewatched Superstore so many times, but Superstore is one of the funniest shows of all time and it has such good rewatchability and it's really just like it gets funnier and funnier every time like there's just so so many good jokes in a short period of time yeah max said he liked it better than the office yesterday morning i think it's past the office for me i just yeah. i just think so i don't it's and that's saying a lot for a show we like didn't really want to start watching and then instantly fell in love with yeah all right you tell me how you feel about the A story and then take us into the B story. I love the A story. I love all the ridiculousness with the goose. Uh, I, I, it makes me a little uncomfortable to hear that she's probably been smooching a goose. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. Just like it makes me a little comfortable for her to be like turned on by a beefy horse. But that's Tina for us. And, uh, you know, it's a confusing time in your life being a teenager. And your hormones are all over the place. So good. Uh, I'm glad you bonded with a goose. And uh, I enjoy Bruce. I like to think that his, he was named after Springsteen and not because it rhymes with goose. And um, I will, spoiler alert, enjoy Bruce's appearance in the end credits. Ah, as will I. As will I. I don't enjoy what um, Gene and Louise do to Bruce, capturing him in that box. Ooh, I did not like that. He's yeah. able to get out of it on his own. 
and somehow make his way to Wagstaff. Very, very yeah. intelligent goose. Yeah, I, but this is what I'm saying. This is the emotional bond this goose has. He's like, I know where my girl is. It's interesting. It's just, <laughs> I, just, I just don't understand it. Well, you wouldn't, no, would you? I, no, I wouldn't. I would not. I'm on my phone all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take us into the B story. B story. We've got a, a Gretchen themed B story. Gretchen needs a date for our wedding. And she has no luck. She seems to pick the wrong guys. And she seems okay with the guys. Isn't it her? parents that are like that's true she picks the guys that she enjoys but her parents and sister are very critical about these men and she almost uh hooks up with teddy but teddy's got to be elsewhere so enter linda who always comes in a little too strong and forces her opinions and thoughts onto someone else tries to set her up with someone who she's not compatible with to go mm -hmm. to this wedding with. Mm -hmm. Messages them without Gretchen's permission. Not cool, Linda. Come yeah. on. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, Coda. Linda needs to go to Codependent Synonymous, which is Coda. If you're not familiar with Codependency, a lot of people think it's just about being with someone too much which is not what codependency is. Codependency is if you're trying to save someone, fix someone, live in their their life more than your own, you know, cater to someone else's feelings more than your own. And Linda is textbook codependent. She is a meddler. Yeah, mm -hmm. and she does a little bit of damage, but she always comes back. She always learns her lesson. But forgets it by the next episode. Yeah, I mean, that's classic sitcom. Yep. Y you gotta start at the bottom again. It wouldn't be interesting. No. If she learned her lesson. Yeah. Now I can't stop thinking about this is me now. Not Jean's line, but... The Jennifer Lopez movie? Yeah. No, not it's movie. not... Sorry. It's not a movie. Don't call it a music video. It's not a music video. It's not a movie. The documentary. Something else. Something else. But, you know, when she's at... Uh, Love Addiction Anonymous. Oh, in the movie. The, sorry, not a movie. Music video. <laughs> not, not a music, music video. video. Whatever it is. I could do a whole podcast on the documentary, which is called The Greatest Love Story Never Told. That's what the documentary is called. And then her not music video, not film. This is me, dot, 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 now. I could. I could write a whole thesis on it. Just an excuse to put our Jennifer Lopez, this Gene, this is me now meme into yep. the carousel. So that's in there too, yep. if you haven't seen it already. I have a lot of like little cute notes that I loved about the episode. Why don't you talk to us about Susmita? Oh, there was just a Susmita sighting in the background at the cafeteria, school cafeteria. We'll put that in the carousel too. It's just nice to see her appearing, even though she doesn't have a speaking role. Because She's... we got introduced to her this season. So yeah. it's nice to see her back there. She's at school. She's a student. She should be there. Yep. And then in that same scene, Gene is like drinking his milk. And it's like the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. And he does it for like a full 15 seconds. And it's adorable. I'm proud of Gene for getting that calcium in. Mm-hmm. Like you know? a little 90s kid. They're eating their little school burritos. And you got to get some. Those, those look good. They do look good. I like the school burrito. I We didn't have a cafeteria yet at my middle school. Uh -huh. You had to bring your lunch. Wait, do you want me to go through these or did you want to give us some fun facts? I just got two fun facts. So whatever. Should I just give you? Yeah, yeah, Okay. Yeah. So one fun fact is this is the first time we see a change in the Molino sister name because Lizzie Molino got married. Is it so moving Lofin? forward? She's no, I like that though. That would have been a good pun name. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's Lizzie Molino Logalin, I think, or Logalin. Uh... I don't know if it's soft G or hard G. Uh, only Lizzie and her husband could let us know that. But uh, I feel like she has a bread moment. loaf in her Instagram bio. So my head just started calling her Loaf. Loaflin. Loaflin, yeah. got it. <laughs> but we'll still always refer to them as the Molino sisters. Which they still are. Yeah. They still are the Molino sisters. And then just two pun names, which is perfect because 
Uh, we mentioned our YouTube earlier. Mm -hmm. If you go to our YouTube right now, there is a video where we go through every single business pun from the Bob's Burgers movie, even the hard to see ones. We tried our ones best. In the night. You're going to be surprised by how many there are. So go watch that video with visuals and everything from the movie. But we get to across from the hair barrel where Gretchen is still working. So she's having a good run longer than the American Girl store. Um, <laughs> the two across the way are Dirty Pantsing Laundromat. Love. And A Jar is Born Baby Food. I was trying to read that and I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Thanks like, for catching this. I like this. both of those. Just wanted to say one last thing that we get another appearance by Mrs. Selbo, who we haven't seen since season seven, okay. episode 11, A Few Gert Men. Sarah Baker is back um, doing that voice. She is the Wagstaff receptionist. The oh, gossipy Wagstaff receptionist. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. Okay. I still don't know who Sarah Baker is, though. She's uh, the voice of Mrs. Elbo. She's uh, an actor, comedian you would probably recognize, but okay. I can't think of what she's in right this moment. Last time we talked about Mrs. Elbo, probably in A Few Gert Men, we listed some credits. Okay. Let's go through some of these other notes you have besides the Smita. To piggyback off your puns, um, I noticed both of the burgers of the day played into the plot, which I always love seeing. Um, so Linda is on a matchmaking mission, and the burgers are sil sealed with a Swiss, and I love you the way you are. W-H-E-Y. Mm -hmm. And those get ordered, too. We get two two burgers of the day. Yeah, they order the Swiss one. Yeah. Which sounds better than the way. Yeah, but yeah. Bob's got to be thrilled. He's got to be thrilled. Do you think Linda, like, forced him? Or, like, it was just, like, on top of his mind since his wife was doing this crazy love I matching think, mission? I think, I, I think one thing Bob doesn't let Linda control is the pun names. You're right. You are so right. I think it's what's on his mind, and, and but he doesn't let Linda... Do yeah, that. yeah, exactly. That's where he draws the line. I do want to say something about Bob in this episode. He is so funny with all the inappropriate things his kids are saying in this episode. <gasps> it's he in is... like the first 10 seconds or whatever. So good. Like when he says to Tina, like, don't say big D. So good. And uh, she's telling him about her fan, her zombie fan fiction. Um, and he's like, no, I don't, I don't need to know what happens. You can leave me in suspense. Yeah. <laughs> He's so he's so funny. <laughs> he's so great. Um, blender alert. We have been on blender alert ever since they won it in that airplane paper airplane episode. It is on the counter. Blender lives. The blender lives. I want to keep an eye on it because I feel like eventually you want the blender to be put in the cabinet. Also, I just have to say that this is the first time I've really loved Gretchen in an episode. She's not my favorite, but sh she rose so many points in this episode for me. And I have to just shout out one of her character traits. Her stirruped leggings tucked in to her shoes is a character detail that I'm going to say brilliant. Yeah. I can't believe you haven't noticed that before. Oh, I've noticed it, but I oh. just saw it a lot this time yeah and i was kind of reminded of it yeah i guess there was a lot of like full body shots of her so you could see really see the stirrup legging which is it's just a brilliant detail it is she's exactly the kind of person that would wear that yeah i i adore it yeah um and then the last thing that i feel very strongly about mentioning is jocelyn love me some jocelyn you know how i feel about jocelyn i sure do when she says that her prom date even though it's not prom proposed to her with by spelling out like will you go to the dance with me in worms she said he taught the worms to spell i love jocelyn so much <laughs> she's so great <laughs> just before we go into the end credits this is going to be in my top 10 bob's burgers episodes yeah i can see that what about you? I can see that. I'd have to go through mm -hmm. my list, mm -hmm. but I could see it being a contender. It's 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 a very, 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 very good episode. Like I said earlier, I think I'd use the same amount of varies too. And I'm sorry. I just have to say, compared to the episode we watched last week, it's only cemented my feelings that it that Bed, Bob, and Beyond is 
as politely as I can say it, not my favorite episode. Bottom 10 for sure, unfortunately. But Maybe not bottom 10. I don't know. I, it's definitely in my bottom 10, I think, especially in a selection of 10, which is like it's probably so hard to put Bosberger's episode in a bottom 10. Yeah. Because even a bottom 10 is great, but mm -hmm. it's that one's definitely my bottom 10. Again, like I said in that episode, like it's not one that I would ever go put on just to put on. Yeah. I feel yeah. On a more positive note. Should we get into the end credits? Yeah, let's okay. do it. Okay. The last moment before the end credits is the family is all together in this gorgeous park, as they should be. <laughs> they should be in this park more frequently. All the time. Just uh, it's a gorgeous park. It's I I'm shocked that they don't charge for that park. I am thrilled that Gus makes his way away from the water side, which, by the way, also wonderful, to go sit by this park and read a newspaper. He deserves to be there on the bench. We need to do an evolution of Gus on Patreon. Oh, I think he's definitely. the next side character. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, if you want that bonus episode, we're going to record it soon. So go over to on Patreon. Over there. Okay, so they're all in the park. Tina's saying goodbye to Bruce, who now has a new potential mate. Thank God. Yeah, and we'll see what happens. Bruce, over there, hot goose. Let's see if you two get along. Oh, wow, you get along really well. Slow down, guys. You don't even know each other. <laughs> All right, let's go. I gotta get home for my big date with Gretchen. I'm glad you're getting back out there, Mom. Hey, Dad, maybe we can find you a park animal. I like that weird duck over there. Who wouldn't? Bruce. I just have to say, at that very last line of Bob's, he sounds so much like Jimmy Jr. It's like John Benjamin just got done doing Jimmy Jr.'s lines, and he went right to doing Bob's. I got to hear it again. I'm so sorry. Okay. Hey, Dad, maybe we can find you a park animal. I like that weird duck over there. What yes. I like that uh, weird duck over there. Yeah, it's just missing the speech impediment. Yeah. Okay. So tell me what happens as we get into these end credits. I feel like I've been talking so much. I'm going to let you take it. Okay. Max, so tell me what happens when we... This would be like if I did the podcast myself. <laughs> Max, <laughs> tell me what you see when we get into these end credits. Well, Max, I see we are in the... Uh, generic kitchen sequence. So we've got Bob and Louise are prepping the burgers. Tina is not with them because she is busy dancing behind them with Jimmy Jr. and Bruce the Goose. Aww. They're doing all sorts of dance moves and Jimmy Jr. is holding his butt as he dances. I should say that he's in his uh pro his his dance outfit too. Yeah, no zombie makeup, but he's in his his dance outfit. And he is not letting that butt muscle stop him from no, dancing. No, and uh, as any dancer should not. Exactly. If you are injured, power through it is what I always say. Yep, that that works out well. Keep, yeah, keep putting strain on it. Mm -hmm. The goose is using its wings as some arms, and, and this is a dancing trio. This goose is, is a good dancer, I got to say. He I has a name. See, I want to see a movie starring Bruce the Goose and Julia Stiles <laughs> in a dance competition. <laughs> the, the, what? What? Is, what was that movie you said? There's like a truck and a. Earlier, you were giving us that synopsis. Oh, the Clint Eastwood movie <laughs> yeah. with his orangutan, and yeah, yeah that's gonna be the same thing. Yeah. Every which it, it could be called every which way but goose. Yes. It could be Julia Stiles and a goose. Yes. If I was the head of a studio and someone came to me and said, "Okay." The pitch for a movie is Julia Stiles and a goose. I'd be like, sold before they just said anything else. <laughs> Agreed. Okay, so we got this song that's just ba ba ba, Bruce the Goose. We're going to get some more lyrics soon. Tell me about just some of these moves we're getting from the the three dancers here oh i i don't really have that much more to say i was kind of closing my eyes and listening to the music because i like trying to pick out cast yeah in the music so i was listening to that and i heard some like ah oh, in the background of the music which was delightful yeah they're just kind of like doing like some it's hard it's really hard to describe but they're all kind of like doing the same moves together the three of them uh jimmy jr and tina are following bruce the goose it seems yes. like he's, oh i didn't he's I didn't the leader that. of the dance moves i love and that jimmy jr is trying to do the best he can with his hand on his butt which is probably the best detail i think and, yeah and should probably point out that the rest of the family is really just doing what they normally do yep uh louise is 
going to get a burger from Bob to put in the window. Linda's going to make her appearance. Gene is going to make his appearance at the very end in his burger costume walking across. Yep. Basically, it's all about this dancing trio. Mm-hmm. Kind of Bruce the Goose. Okay, so at a certain point, they Bruce starts putting like his wings up, kind of like, like almost like a raise the roof type thing. Yes. And so Tina does the same. Jimmy does it with one hand. And then they kind of go back to like dancing. So it's almost like Bruce is doing like a pelvic thrust kind of with his wings tucked in a little bit. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they're just copying him. And then we get the rest of these lyrics, which are, ba-ba-ba, Bruce, ba-ba-ba, Bruce the Goose. They repeat that a few times, and it's kind of clingy, Bruce the Goose, telling stories to Bruce the Goose, friends forever, Bruce the Goose, secret kiss with Bruce the Goose. I love it. I I, love the callback. I do too. Gross, but still. (laughs) um, Yeah. Should we score them? We should. I just wanted to ask you this, like, it reminds me of a classic song, but I can't recall it. Are you thinking of it like, fa 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 better? Yes. Yeah. Who is that? The Clash? Oh, hang on. I know this. Maybe the Talking Heads? That sounds right. Oh, yeah. It is the Talking Heads. Good for uh, you. The Psycho Killer. Do, Psycho have we had killer. that on Bob's Burgers before? I don't think so. Uh, whatever. I think I did a Chip Chip a when I was doing weird Chip Chip a songs at a certain point. What All is it? It's French, right? French? We're bringing it back to French. The song is like Psycho Killer something Qu'est-ce French. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Qu'est-ce que c'est? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> fa, fa, fa. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So good. Are you ready to score them? Yeah. Okay. We score on a scale of one to 10 H's at the end of Tina's A. Uh... I'm going to let you take this one first. Um... I just got to say it. Tina, in the French dub, when she goes, uh, she sounds like she's insanely constipated. Okay. I can't wait. <laughs> That's just something to look forward to with Skylar's sides. I Next need a, week, babies. Yeah. I need a Tina, uh, in French. <laughs> yeah. Um, nine. 9.5. Okay. I'm going to say, uh, yeah, I'm going to say nine. Great. I think nine. It's I feel good about that. Catchy song. Stuck in my head. I love seeing a goose dance. Oh, we forgot to say we have a classic Gene Gene Belcher in his burger costume. Oh, I said that. Oh, was I looking at New York Times articles about Julia Stiles? Probably. Okay, I'm really sorry. Which I'll allow. <laughs> I love it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, they're just pure fun, feel good. And again, like, I love when we get an animal dancing. It's so fun. Good point. I would Bob love to see Biscuit do some of these Bruce moves, but I oh, think he, he only does such a cute belly. He only does the pelvic thrusting when he's humping a pillow or a blanket. Loves humping a pillow. He does. Yeah, he does. Those were the end credits to Every Which Way But Goose. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Make sure you're following us everywhere on social media. Bob's credits. Make sure you're subscribed to YouTube. Bob's credits over there, too. Make sure you're, what else, Uh, taking care of yourselves and watching plenty of Julie Stiles movies? Yes, that's uh, correct. And anything else you want to say to everyone before we get out of here? No, just love y'all. And save the last dance for me? Oh, with with pleasure. Okay. (laughs) Do they ever play that song in that movie? Instead of stay saucy, save... Bossy. The last dance. Do, have, do they ever say, you know what we need to do now? Save the last dance. <laughs> this time, it's personal. Yeah. At the end, <laughs> like she says, like, hey, finger guns. <laughs> Save the last dance for me. Ooh. Credits. Okay. Credits roll. <laughs> <laughs>